now we're going to start populating the transform box here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a label and then a row of three of the double spin boxes which are here, which are then going to be used for setting the elements of the NGL transform class which I'm going to use later. So the transform has three elements. It has scale, rotate and position and I'm going to add those in now. So I'm going to start off I think with the rotation one. So I'm going to grab a label and place it in here and I'll just say rotation um, we could name the labels, but it will auto name them. To be honest, I'm not going to change any of the text. I think if you were, you would start naming them correctly and giving them names. Now, obviously, at the moment, this is not part of the um, layout as such, because if we run this, we'll see that we have our rotation in there. But as I start to move this around, it's, it's there, but you can see that it's beginning to be overdrawn there. So what we need to do is to now add a layout to this. I'm going to use a grid layout again. So I've clicked on the group box, I click on layout. You can see now it's been laid out as in the previous way. And what I'm gonna now do is add three double spin boxes below. So there's my first one. Now, and again, we'll see the layout in action, if I put one there and I add a third here, you can see how they're being laid out in the correct sort of way now. So it's important now that I name these because I want to be able to access these within the main program. So I'm going to call this M underscore rotation X. I'm going to call this one M underscore rotation Y and this one M underscore rotation Z and I'm now going to using the um, Apple key but it's alt on other ones I'm going to select all three and you'll see now that we have access to certain shared parameters that all of them have and what I'm interested in here is the minimum and maximum values so I'm going to set minimum to minus 360 because this is rotation I'm going to set maximum to 360 and now if we run this we should see that we've got um, our ability to roll these to 360 and if we go the other way we should be able to go to um, minus 360. What I'm going to do now is replicate this for the scale. So I will grab my next label. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to call this scale. And I'm going to add another three of the double spin boxes. So again, we want it below the scale element there. One. To. Now you can see because we've already got an existing grid layout that we actually get the red highlighted cells there which allow us to access these things. So again, I want to name them so I can access them later. M underscore scale X. M underscore scale Y. And M underscore scale Z. And I'm going to select all three again, and I'm going to set the default. So I think I'll have the minimum as minus 10, the maximum as 10, and the initial value I'll set to 1, because obviously we want a uniform scale of 1, so the object will be the correct size. And we're going to replicate this again now, and we're going to set our position. So new text label, position, add in three more of these double spin boxes. So one, two, three, like that. We'll call this one M underscore position 
x um, underscore position y and m underscore position z like that and set some default constraints so um, minimum will do minus 20 maximum will do minus uh, sorry plus 20 and we'll leave the position at zero so it will be at the origin and if we save that and run there we should see that we've got a nice little transform box there but most importantly as we move this around everything scales correctly you can see the layout in action working so everything um, is not being obscured we can go to a minimum size now we can't stop that working and that's the QT layout in action for the next dialog box I'm going to do something very similar I'm going to click on here I'm going to add a couple of controls for drawing the first thing I'm going to add is a um, a combo box so I'm going to drag that along there and again at the moment this isn't controlled by a layout so I'm going to click on my um, layout again and click on grid layout there I'm going to now highlight my combo box and I'm going to call this M underscore um, draw sorry what should I call it object selection and if we double click on this now it brings up an edit box where we can add our items so teapot sphere and cube we'll have those as our three drawer options we can change the order by using these up and down buttons here and there are more advanced properties that we can set including icons and things like that not going to bother about those now we'll just put that there and I'm going to add a button I'm going to add a checkbox button here for drawing in wireframe um, which will have default as off and I'm going to add a simple push button here um, choose color and if we run this now you can see that we've got our two draw modes and now everything's constrained to the correct size now this button here does look rather large we could if we wish put in a spacer here and he says put in a spacer here no it's not letting me do it come on this sometimes is the problem with doing this that you can't get them in the correct space no it's not working I won't bother with that um, if we were to add another GUI component it would do it, it just doesn't want a, a spacer in there for some reason let's try again no, ok I won't do that, this is the problems with the layout sometimes I mean that button does look rather large there but um, we'll have to just stick with it um, that way we could do that as a spacer though just to constrain that up like that so that our GUI components are sort of slightly better together and we can work on those elements later